Hello, Ross Goslin here, and this is my uh, second entry for the Get Outside Your Comfort Zone group build. And this is going to be my uh, 148 Kit Bash uh, helicopter, UH-1C Huey, from the uh, Vietnam period. Um, this is a totally new uh, perspective, um, so I'll give you a little brief uh, introduction. I have a new camera, so I'm just sort of um, trying out different things. Apparently I have uh, a big fluorescent light right here and it's the, uh, the best light in the house. So um, everything else kind of has an orange glow to it if I go upstairs. So um, I have to work on probably acquiring some um, lighting. I know um, a couple guys have been mentioning it over the years. Um, recently Ben Cross picked up a light that he highly recommended and uh, Cohen C talks about it a little bit and I'm sure um, people like Norman Lajoie also have a lot of information on lighting so I'll probably be seeking you guys out for um, tips and advice uh, so yeah I got a camera it's cool um, I'm looking forward to it it's very um, it's a lot of information like you would you know all of you who have cameras out there is a lot of things and details and instructions so um, it's gonna be a work in progress so I don't expect um, Steven Spielberg type uh, motion pictures from me anytime soon. Anyway, let's get down to the model. Um, yeah, so what happened, um, yeah, I picked up this Hobby Blast kit sometime last fall, and um, it's a nice little kit. It's, uh, it says Easy Assembly, and it's a really great little beginner kit. Um, what I really found attractive about it was that it has really nice detail on the uh, aircraft. Um, and then, you know, like all model builders, I like to do a little research on the subject that I'm doing. And I came across an article uh, from a man who built this helicopter, uh, but also um, made it a little bit more uh, detailed, uh, gave it a little bit more uh, pop. So um, I was very moved by the article, and it inspired me to do what I'm planning to do with this uh, group build uh, project. I'll try to get the details of the author of the article and the website in the description, I hope, because um, I always feel like, you know, give credit where credit's due. Um, so this was really an inspirational build, but I, I will be going beyond what the author did on his aircraft. So let's get down to business. So my uh, comfort zone, my, I'm leaving my comfort zone and I'm going into the world of kit bashing and scratch building with this entry and it's a little terrifying because um, I've never done a kit bash and I'm gonna be actually doing a full uh, scratch built interior on the Huey so I've never done I've only done minor interiors so this is gonna be way out of my comfort zone but um, I'm pretty confident it's gonna be a lot of fun I'm very excited about it because I'm, I'm due to do this this is you know it's my moment my time here we are all right, so here's the kit, and um, yeah, the uh, author, you know, it's a, you can build it as a UH-1C or an E, um, but as the author mentioned, um, due to some problems, you can't make either of them. One being that this came with no weaponry, so you can't make a Huey Hog out of it. And also, um, yeah, you can't, no guns, nothing. So what I'm going to do is I took the, um, and he recommended, you know, take the old Ravel monogram, Huey Hog and swap out the the guns from this and install it. So I plan on doing that. And the other problem is that this particular kit <clears throat> comes with a um, the rotor blade is really small. It's a, a 21 inch rotor blade, which is nice if you have no weaponry. But the problem was that I did some research is that um, Bell the company, uh, you know, knew that they were going to make a gunship out of it. So, in order to give it better lift, they had to create a wider blade. And actually, the monogram Ravel Huey Hog comes with the the right one. So you can see, it's definitely a huge difference, length and width of the blades. So I'm going to be taking out the monogram one and using that. Okay. Hope I haven't lost you yet. 
And then the weaponry system is all here. And um, there's going to be some minor scratch building and some conversions. Um, one thing I really want to do is, um, this is the, uh, the chain link chute. And um, I really don't like the molding, it's kind of eh. So I'm going to probably try to do a little um, scratch building and actually make uh, some basic chute thing that just looks a little bit better. I'm not really looking for accuracy, I'm just looking for better presentation. That's not mice, that's the heater doing some funky sound. Anyway, so there's that, and um, yeah, that's mostly the kit bash. What else am I going to do? Um, it's in the box. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and focus in later at the end of the video or part two and I'll talk about what I'm going to do um, like a lot of things I'm actually keeping I'm actually going to be using the, um, the actual rotor system I thought it was a little bit better than the one that came with Hobby Boss and like things like the seats I'll keep and I have something cool I'm going to be doing so yeah here's the uh, actual chopper and what I've already started doing was I'm going to be removing the doors and the vents. I'm going to open them all up. And I already started. And I got it already done on this side. I just got a few more things to do. But I've cut out the door and all the vents. Which is really impressive. Um, I'm taking my time with this because I'm actually going to be using... Um, using this as a tutorial for one of my uh, new series workbench creations which will be coming up next year so um, so far I'm very impressed with the other uh, work so um, what's going to happen is I'll be taking the doors from the Revell kit and I'll just you know put them on like that and that's going to look really sharp All right. So yeah, I got a nice thing. So that's the uh, the conversion or the kit bash. The terrifying part will be the inside. All right. Um, so I had to do a lot of research. I took um took some time uh, gathering a lot of pictures that were available on the internet, which is amazing. There's always plenty of resource material there. I gathered probably a good three or four dozen uh, interior photo shots of museum pieces and it was very helpful. So I'm going to be, I uh, got some anti-skid plate which I'll be using for the, uh, the flooring. It's in 148 scale so it's going to be look pretty sweet. Uh, so that floor will be covered and then I noticed that the, uh, the helicopters, the interior has like a it almost looks like a quilted blanket. I think it must be some sort of like sound buffering or insulation because that engine is like right here so somehow I have to replicate it. Um, I'm thinking maybe sculpting it with um, milliput or some kind of putty. And um, I got some ideas, but I'll have to uh, share them with you later. I don't got my material with me right now. Um, so that covers the walls and um, the seats. The seats that the model came with are they're poor. Um, again. There's no interior, it's just very generalized. <clears throat> I didn't really care for it, and even the monogram kit stuff, I'm not excited about. So, um, it's basic construction, like the actual vehicle, it's kind of like a tubed aluminum with like a cloth seat material. So, I'm thinking just using brass tubing and, and use some sort of a paper, wet paper tissue. Uh, method that we would use for stowage on uh, military AFVs. So I think that could work pretty well. Um, the other scratch building piece is going to be, uh, I'll talk about it on the second part of the video, but um, the the guns have the ammo boxes are on the inside here and they're, they're really big boxes and they go under the seat. And that's just a molded piece and it's just a big plastic blob so that's just a bunch of cubes so I can probably scratch build that with styrene that shouldn't be a big deal 
Um, so that's most of the scratch building that's going to take place. So obviously there'll be some wiring and um, little bits and bobs for the uh, pilots and co-pilot. But um, that shouldn't be too big of a deal. I've, again, I got a lot of pictures and it looks pretty doable. So I'm very excited about this build. Yes, I am nervous. It is out, it's far outside my group, my comfort zone. Um, but the excitement is definitely worth being that far away from the, the zone. So, that's that. Um, yeah, so I got my piece here, and then like all of us, I got weird. <laughs> I picked up this kit thinking it was different, but actually it's just another reboxing of this kit. But the difference being, it does come with a better sheet of decals. So I got plenty of decals for this kit. I actually got three sheets now. I got the set that came with the Hobby Boss kit, which is cool. It's got some uh, shark teeth, which I don't think I'm going to use. Um, so that's there. And then the, the vintage box came with this set, which is okay, you know. And then the actually the Revelled the latest one, it's got a really sweet design. It's got um this thing goes on the tail fuselage, and then these pieces go on the fins, and it looks really nice. It's from a, a Huey in 1965, a Marine Corps Huey gunship. And I think we're gonna use that. It's got a lot of flashy colors on it. So that'd be kind of cool. So that's that. Um, it even came with, I'm considering the, using the little uh, figures. Came with figures, the, uh, the old uh, Revell monogram piece. I always think of uh, Panzer Man Bill, he's always into the figures. Um, I may consider it. Um, we'll see what happens. I really don't know what the finished result of the, uh, the helicopter is going to be. I might put it on some sort of like. Um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of like um, pictures where they're on like these like fabricated landing pads with like sandbags and those um, that metal sheet metal they would put on sand for like runway strips. So I might just do that and put some uh, jungle foliage around it. I really don't know yet. That's way far ahead. So we'll see what happens. I'm not even sure we're going to finish this for the uh, finish of the group build. I got seven months. So, I think it can get done. I, I got confidence. Alright, so enough of me talking in, in my face. Um, so let's um, get down on the workbench and I can give you some nice close-ups about um, some of the details. Alright, so let's get down there. Alright, here we are. We're uh, up close and personal with my uh my model and my uh, project that is so far removed from the comfort zone. So here's the uh, the Huey, and this is the construction I've done so far. I've uh, I've removed the door. There's a little bit of the door edging still here that will come off later. I'm going to grind it down, and I've uh, taken out the vents here. So I plan on um, replacing the mesh with some uh, photo etch mesh or grill and that's going to come out good. I still got, uh, I took out all of the um, the ribs you can probably see it on the reverse but there's ribs here and I couldn't really get a nice accurate cut without removing them so I'll just put some in with styrene and that's going to look really nice as you can see it is a classic tail sitter you know, so um, this nice little pocket right inside here behind the uh, control board. I might throw in some um, some weights, and hopefully it will uh, do a good job of keeping it level. Here are the uh, doors that I'm using, and uh, they look pretty good. I think they'll serve uh, the purpose. So we can just, uh, let's just, I'll attach them somehow here, but that's what they look like with it shut and open. So that's going to work all right. Now 
Now, what else can I talk about? Um, well, let's go into, we'll just rip it apart. No big deal. Um, here we have the, the inside. I still got a few things that need to get done. Um, as you can see, trying to give you an angle where you can see it, but I do have these little blocks. These are where the uh, the floor here uh, gets slides into these slots. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work to uh, shave off the top so that won't be visible. One aspect of the kit, what I want to do is I want to try to incorporate the engine pieces right here. This is from the uh, the old Revell kit, and what I like about it is that I have an opportunity to use it in the the build. Because now that I have the vents open for the engine, that might actually look really sharp when it's, uh, it's right behind it, and um, that'll just ex add a little extra detail and enhancement. And obviously, I still got my um, the tip sticking out. I'll just shave that off, and um, I still want to keep the actual piece. I think that looks a lot better than this one. Moving on, um, yeah, I just want to give you kind of a, a comparison, I guess, of the two. Here's the old Ravel monogram piece. And then here's obviously the, the new one. You know, there's not really much of a, a significant difference. I mean, this, this is the Revell kit. It's still a nice kit. I remember, was it last year, I, ISM did the... There's those mice again. Uh, they did that Whirly Bird group build, and a lot of guys um, built this, uh, this kit. So it's still pretty common, and people are still building it. The plastic is very thin, though. Um, but it's got a lot of nice detail. Um, it's got raised panel lines, but that's typical for the period in which this kit was built. Um, so yeah, no, still, still okay. I'm just, um, yeah, obviously this is you know, moving into the 21st century now, and um, you know the plastic is a lot more thicker. It's got recessed panel lines, um, and it's okay. Uh, going into the interior, we got a bunch of things going on here. So here's the um, the floor, and because this kit was a, it had no intentions of being an interior shown model, it has no interior other than some some seats, which <clears throat> I don't feel are, are very accurate. By any stretch of the imagination, um, they're okay, but again, it wasn't designed to be seen, so it was just a generalization. So I'm going to remove these and add my own. But like I said uh, earlier, I got um, some brass anti skid plate 148 scale from Airwaves, I'm going to use to drop on this. And the other piece will be trying to replicate the that padding material for the uh, the interior, which interesting enough, the monogram Revell kit actually does replicate it pretty well. You can see it's all very bumpy, but I really just couldn't use it too well. Um, that'd be just way too much overhaul for me. So I'm just going to use putty and use uh, embossing material to replicate it, and I'll use it along the walls and the roof. The rotors, here's another close-up of the rotor blades. And you can just do a side-by-side -side comparison of what we got. So this is the Hobby Boss, and this is the Revell one. Um, again, this is the 21-inch blade, this is the 27-inch. Significant difference. Um, 
for the most part, it's okay. It's got um got a lot of cleanup issue in here, but I'm okay with that. And obviously, it's got some your traditional ejection pin markings, but that's not a big deal. And then I'll probably use the hot water method to give it the sag necessary for our stationary chopper. Now one thing that scares the heck out of me, and I realized this when I was doing some research for this build, was that the actual helicopter had some tinted windows above the pilot and co-pilot. They were like a tinted green. Now uh, Norm Lajoie just did a video this summer on a vehicle where he used uh, some pigments or some kind of coloring, maybe it was an ink, I don't remember but uh, it, they gave it a tinted look. So I'm going to be uh, probably searching out the guru master himself for um, advice on this technique. I got plenty of clear plastic parts to practice on from the Revell kit, so I'm going to give that a whirl and see what happens. Weapon systems. Uh, what do we got here? We got... Here it is. We got our... Um, rocket pods, we got our uh, M60 machine guns right over here and this is the uh, what's it, the 60 millimeter grenade gun thing the particular version I'm building doesn't have one so I'm not going to be using it and then you got the uh, machine gun length shoots which I'll be trying to uh, replace with some scratch building magic and these are the actual uh, racks that sits underneath. Um, this should be okay. I think the machine guns are probably the weakest link right now. I've considered trying to maybe use some uh, brass rod to for the barrels. I may just do a little bit of conversion or modification just to enhance it a little bit. I want to do a little bit of wiring for the uh, hydraulics because apparently these machine guns could uh, move uh, a certain amount of degrees. So, it's still a working project. I got a lot more uh, planning ahead of me before I uh, start working on it. And other than that, um, a few things I'm going to keep. I'm considering uh, keeping the seats for the Revell kit. And here we have the Hobby Boss one. I don't think it's so much an issue of accuracy or anything. I just, the, this one is a bit large. And, um,. The author of the article I was reading actually recommended keeping the seats from the uh, Revell set. So I may do a little bit of modification because I noticed there are some differences in the real seats, but we'll see what happens with that. And lastly, the rotor system. Here's the actual rotor. Um, obviously, I'm going to, this is part of it as well. Um, there's a few pieces I'm keeping, there's a few pieces. It really isn't going to be a traditional kit bash because some parts I like and other parts I don't. So I'm going to keep this piece. I really like it. It's been looking at some of the actual uh, engineering design pictures and this one actually looks really good. I may just remove all these rods and replace it with uh, brass because this one's all bent the heck out here. Because the one that came with it, the Hobby Boss piece, uh, I don't know, I don't, it doesn't really look like the actual one that I can see from any uh, engineering designs, I don't know. But it won't fit anyway because I wanna, I'm want to. i trying to install this and I don't want to go nuts trying to make it work. So I'm going to keep with the Revell one. And then one I will keep from the Hobby Boss is that this uh, the balance piece. It looks a lot better than the Revell one. So, we'll see. Because I already did some dry fitting and this one fits pretty well. So, they're about the same length. So that's not an issue. Um, the Revell one looks a little bit bigger, but I'm not, I'm not overly concerned. I don't think you guys can see that, so let me bring it out here a little bit. So they, they should work. 
Again, not a big deal. So, I think I've covered a lot of what I'm doing. Obviously, there's a lot of stuff going on here. It looks overwhelming and intimidating, but I kind of enjoy it. I kind of thrive on this kind of model building. So, for me, it's an adventure, and um, definitely it's just uh, pushing, pushing the limit beyond my comfort zone and, and entering other realms of the hobby. So before I end it, I'll just um, give you a nice close-up of the decal sheets as I don't think they came out that well in the first part of the video. Oh yeah, let me scratch that. I want to talk about this a little bit because this is another scratch building piece. This is the actual floor plan that came with the Revell set and this is, uh, you know, it's got some nice anti-skid plate on it. Um, I considered trying to, you know, somehow I would have to actually like make it fit on here and to me that just seems like a heck of a lot of work. I'd rather just go buy some brass anti-skid plate, cut it and slap it in. But it does come with the uh, ammo boxes here and it's all molded on so what I'm gonna do is it's all cubes and squares and straps so I'm thinking just styrene bits and I can replicate a pretty nice ammo box um, I don't know if I can focus in closer but there's something to consider I've noticed that different versions of the helicopter from what I've seen I don't know if my camera can I, I know it can autofocus and it's trying but it, it really can't um, the machine gun belts sometimes actually go through the floor, but other pictures I've seen it just going out into the machine gun. So I'll just probably do the uh, the ladder. I don't want I don't want to go too nuts with this project. It's already crazy enough, but there are some options. So that's the floor plan piece and the ammo boxes. So lastly. Just want to talk about the decals, give you a show you them. So this is the set that came with um, the vintage Revell kit. I hope you can see that here. So, and um, they can look pretty cool. I don't know the register. Um, I have no idea. I mean, they look like they should probably work okay. A lot of the guys that built this kit, I don't recall them complaining about the decals. And this is the Hobby Boss set. Um, and I didn't, I haven't opened it from the plastic. I'm just going to leave it closed. But you can basically, yeah, there's some shark teeth right here. And um, I may use some of the stars and stuff. I don't know yet. And then on a reverse, it's got another set of. Um, Looks like some instructional things that you would put on the, uh, the aircraft. I don't know what it says actually, but yeah. And then this is the set that I want to use the most. It's the um, this is the latest that Revell reboxing, but it's got some sweet colors. Um, you know, this is the one that goes on the fuselage, and then you got these colors that go on the fins. I just got to make sure these match properly because um, the fins that come with the Revell kit, I don't know if they're the same size as the ones that go with the Hobby Boss. So I got to make sure that there's a fit. But what is nice is that actually if it doesn't fit, I can actually paint this with masking. That wouldn't be too bad, I don't think. So there's a lot of uh, decal options that I got here. So I'm looking forward to that adventure. So for now, I hope this um, has given you enough information on what this project is, is turning into. And it's definitely outside the comfort zone, and there's a lot of different things going on. It's very exciting. Um, I have been watching with uh, a lot of enthusiasm the builds going on. Um, because it is such a lengthy group build, people are coming in slowly. I think there's about a dozen people that have started already. Um, mostly just uh, introductions and initial phases. We got one or two participants that have kind of finished, but they're actually doing multi-builds. So they're going to be busy for quite a while. 
I'm impressed that you know we got such an international group here in this group build. It's uh, we got people from Mexico, uh, Europe, America, Canadians. I have no idea about the Pacific areas, but um, that's pretty exciting. So that's about it for now. Oops, I'm still working on framing this with the close-up. I got some uh, tape as markers, but I'm doing the best I can. So I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope it was pretty informative. Um, I think Michael and I, we plan on doing a, um, a, a serious group build update sometime in January. So if everybody, is, if anyone's wondering what's going on, it's just um, we're waiting for more material to develop before we um, make an update. So um, just sit tight, and um, sometime in January of next year, we're going to have uh, our first group build update, which would be very exciting to see what's going on. We're also getting a bunch of picks from all those uh, model builders who are not on YouTube, so that's also very exciting. So this is Russ Gosselin signing out, and um, take care, and I'll see you again here on YouTube. Model on, and have a good day.